This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Bossom. I have got Treff Peters with me. You are with Cycling Without Age, Lanark County. Welcome to FYI. Thank you very much for allowing me to share the story of Cycling Without Age. Well, let's get right at it. Let's talk about it. What is Cycling Without Age? Cycling Without Age is a group of volunteers internationally uh, that take a specially designed electrically assisted bicycle that's a three-wheel bicycle referred to as a tri shod so there's a seating compartment in the front and this is a miniature version of a tri shod so the two passengers sit in the front and our passengers ideally are elderly folks from nursing homes is our that's our main focus and the person's seating here is what we refer to as a pilot, it's a volunteer who goes through a training program with us to be able to safely operate the tri shaw while taking the elderly out for a bike ride. And as you know, the elderly have probably suffered the most in this, the last couple of years during the pandemic. But one of our neighbors, Joanne Bell in Brockville, she um, has four, she's been the person who's been responsible for being able to put together that chapter. And she has four tri shaws in the town of Brockville and they were able to operate during the pandemic because they put in some safeguards. We actually have a windshield on the front of the tri shaw to separate the driver from the passengers and they disinfected it, et cetera, et cetera. So we've been uh, putting together our program since 2018 um, and we're ready to launch this spring. We have um, 61 people who have signed in to become pilots but that re requires a training process that we've put together. We actually received a government grant uh, from the province uh, to help us fund our training program. So we actually have, a, now I'm gonna boast a little, but I've looked at the, um, on the international level and, and that's really where it all started. In 2012, a gentleman in Copenhagen, he uh, took a tri, a tri shaw and started taking people out for a ride. And it just caught on. Well, we've actually, uh, currently there's 52 countries and that includes Russia, which is kind of cool. Uh, there's 2,700 chapters worldwide. Uh, we have uh, 3,700 tri shaws in service. There's been, there's 35,000 trained um, pilots and that's growing uh, we actually, like I said earlier, we have 61 signed in. Uh, we have about 37 of those already have gone through a training sessions. Um, we've had people who within an hour or two are able to uh, be confident enough and confident enough to operate the tri shaw safely. We have other people who have, have been nervous and they've taken up to 12 hours to go through our training program. So it's all over the map. But everyone who goes to our training pro program are going to be highly skilled with the tri shaw, so that we're not going to have any uh, grief there. Uh, one of the most exciting things for me is that uh, we're going to have high school students involved, and um, that little miniature tri shaw there, it's going to be uh, turned into a trophy that we're going to um, have available for the high schools. So we've got, we've put a large four foot by four foot signage that we've delivered to all the high schools and the guidance counselors are working with the student councils to make the, the students aware. And as many people are probably aware, students require, um, it used to be 40 hours of community service during the pandemic. My understanding was dropped down to 20. Um, but we have been told there's quite a number of students who are looking for an opportunity to be able to help out. So um, we call it the Cycling Without Age Lanark County Tri Shaw High School Student Challenge. So that to me is going to be really exciting because we're going to be able to reconnect our youth with our elderly neighbors. Now there's, then we, we have the students, then we have, let's say our working age people then we have the seniors, who I am part of that. Uh, I actually get the check, so I'm a qualified old person. <laughs> but then 
I'm trying to change the terminology because we all refer to people in nursing homes as the seniors. Personally, I feel, because I'm a baby boomer, and we baby boomers have been so fortunate, we didn't have to work physically hard, so we got to be, live to be old, and we've got a great medical system supporting us. So we have quite a number of our uh, people who have signed in are actually seniors. So we have quite a large segment of seniors who are gonna help out the elderly and give them company. And it's just gonna be a ball of fun. But the thing is, this is not volunteering as a being doing a work activity and not being paid, which is often what we think of as volunteering, right? Like you're loading shelves at a food bank or, or something of that sort. This is all about fun and joy. Um, so the, it's not only going to be the elderly. Now, I'm going to back up a little bit. My um, spark to be involved in cycling without age was that in the 1980s, I used to belong to the Rotary Club of Renfrew. And we had quite a number of doctors in our Rotary Club. And they did a survey for the local nursing homes. Now, there's the Bonshire Manor, which is down there. They call it the Boncher. Um, it's like our Lanark Lodge. It's the county assisted nursing home. And then there's Groves Park. They did a survey there and they found that now the, the people who in, um, initiated the survey were, were medical doctors of that area. So they know their clients, they know the, you know, they know the community. And what they found was there was a very large number of people uh, residing in our nursing homes who hadn't had a visitor for over a year. Right. And sometimes that was a number of years. And the unfortunate or sad part of it is that our society was so busy that quite a number of those people had people in their family living a short distance away and they just couldn't find time to be able to socialize with them. So the Rotary Club decided that we'd have a program where we'd go in and help uh, and visit with some of the people who are really been stranded there. They, um, I got tagged with a gentleman who was blind. He'd lived his, with his mother his entire life. He had never had the opportunity to go to school. So my, I was to visit him twice a week for two hours for a couple months. And we could never find anything to talk about. Plus, the man didn't understand why I was there. He was very uncomfortable with the whole scenario because he just couldn't relate to it. So to fill the awkward silence, I simply read to him. But try to find a book that someone understands that has never read, has never left the farm, and has never had the gift of sight. So it was the most discouraging. Uh, it deflated my ego. It was really, really hard. And if I had had the opportunity then with the Rotary Club, if we'd been aware, and this program hadn't even been invented at that time, because it's only 2012 since this was put in place. But if it had been put in place at that time, I was an avid mountain biker and an avid uh, bicycle camper, etc. So I would have jumped right in. And I calculated our chapter, we only require to be a qualified pilot that you go through our training program. Once you've fulfilled the, the needs there, you only require to do six outings a year to stay as a qualified pilot. So if I had done the six minimum a year, from that time till now, I would have done 980 rides, you know? So that's if I'd been able to take that gentleman out for a trishaw ride, one, we wouldn't have had to converse if he wasn't comfortable conversing. Two, he would have felt the wind in his face, which is a tagline for our, uh, the right for wind in your face. He would have smelt the flowers. He would have heard the birds, you know? So um, that's why I got involved. I, I could really see the value because we're going into the nursing homes on a regular basis when, at that time. I really saw the loneliness, like physically you could see people, they just look sad, you know? And on the so opposite sense, you, you must see the happiness that the Trishaw brings. It's incredible. We got to go out with Joanne Bell from uh, Brockville and we got to do a group ride. We brought, we have two Trishaws currently and two enclosed trailers. 
One of them is parked at Lanark Lodge on their front lawn. And on the side of the trailer, you'll see a great big um, mural of um, actually the grandparents of our children um, on a tri shaw. And then on the seat, there's one of those bubbles that you would see on Google, Google Maps. You are here. Oh, yes. So, and then on the trailer, we sell advertising. Now, we're not incorporated. We don't have a charitable status. But we were able to overcome that by selling advertising on the trailer. So we have a, if I could show you our list of uh, sponsors, we've got quite, a, we've got like 15 sponsors who have been just fantastic. Um, one of those sponsors is the County of Lanark. The County of Lanark is paying, I think it was in the neighborhood of about $3,500 premium per year for a $5 million liability insurance which covers high school students. And that was very good that McDougall Insurance out of um, um, Perth was able to put together a program that we could have high school students covered, which was very difficult to find an insurance company that was willing to, to work with us. Mm -hmm. So um, currently what we're, what we're doing, we've had communication with the different nursing homes. So we've got that in place. We have a scheduling app. So, Anyone could use their smartphone or a laptop and schedule a meeting with the nursing homes that we partner with. Uh, then they'll get a reply back from the nursing home and confirm that appointment. Uh, the other thing that we have done is we've created, there's links through our website, which is, it, the website is cwalc.org. That represents cyclingwithoutagelanarkcounty.org. And if you go there on the top banner of our homepage, you'll see um, join the fund. If you go to the drop downs, you'll see to become a pilot. And on the bottom of that page to become a pilot, you'll notice there's a group of links that you can re access. Uh, one of those links is the vulnerable sector forms that you require for any form of volunteering today, you require to get that vulnerable sector form uh, cleared with your local OPP station. Uh, the next step would be to read our manual. We've created a really immense manual to safely operate these tri shots. The third thing is we've had um, professionally made YouTube training videos. So there's a whole series of videos and that's going to be expanded upon as time moves on. So we asked the potential pilots to go through those processes and then to book an interview, or sorry, uh, a training session with us. And myself and a, my, one of my partners, Mark Manson, who's a, an avid cyclist and, and is very confident on the tri-shaw, we've been operating uh, training programs for it. Now, Lanark Lodge staff, they went through our training program. We went up there a couple of different times and, and spent several hours with them. So they were trained and we're operating the tri-shaw last year for their, st just with the staff members. That's gonna be opened up to the public this year because of the pandemic regulations, et cetera, et cetera. We kind of took, we sort of stepped back a little bit because we're trying to concentrate on having a large number of people trained and ready to go. Right. So right. Yeah. that's where we're at right now. We're waiting for the weather to break. Right, right, right. Well, this sounds like a wonderful, wonderful program and uh, I, I'm sure you're gonna get booked up for your 2022 season right away too so i i think it's wonderful just the connections you're making and just the opportunities you're bringing people you know especially as we wrap up the the, the pandemic yeah. yeah and you know that we often sort of concentrate thinking about the elderly that this benefits the the elderly that's only a very small portion of it in my opinion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what it's going to be it's it's just going to rebuild that bridge that we've kind of lost in the last couple of generations so it's just gonna be a whole bunch of fun and it's gonna be great for the pilots. It's really gonna be great for the pilots. Yeah. Not only the, um, that they're just gonna have a ball of fun going out with someone who might be 90 years of age and has 90 years of stories to tell. 
Absolutely. And they yeah. just haven't had an opportunity to share them recently. That's right. That's right. Well, so many, so many wonderful reasons to be able to uh, become a pilot with uh, Cycling Without Age. I thank you for being here today. My goodness, we could talk forever about this. And I look forward, maybe we can do a follow-up in, in a couple of months and we can talk about some of the places you've been and the people you've been and with. Well, you're more than welcome to come and join us. And I'd be more than keen to train you as a pilot. I really like the electronic backup, let me tell you. <laughs> Anyone can do it. It's uh, it's electrically assisted. You have someone helping you push the pedals. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I thank you very much for joining us today. Treff Peters was from Cycling Without Age, Lanark County. Good luck for this year. It doesn't sound like you're going to need much of it. You're going to be very popular this year. <laughs> thank you very much for giving us the time to share, the story, <clears throat> to share our story. Thank you.